Hi there, it's Peter here again, the guy who hates tomatoes, but loves front-end development. In today's video, you will learn how to transition between two routes using the React Transition Group. But before we do that, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. Before we get into the code, let's review what we will be building. I have a simple React application working. I have two routes, home and about, and inside of an app container, I'm rendering, I'm switching between two routes, okay? So they are not animating, they are just switching and we only see one at a time. And what we want to do, what we want to learn in this tutorial is how to animate them. So how to fade out firstly the one we currently on and then fade in the one we are clicking into. Okay, so that will be the aim for this tutorial. It might take some time because I want to really break it down into the steps and slow it down. So you are 100% clear how the React router transitions work. And here is the same app with the transition implemented. Okay, so this is the final thing. You will know exactly what classes apply when and it will make very, very easy for you to take this knowledge and apply it to your transitions on your own projects. Now let's jump into VS Code and we'll quickly review what files we'll be working with. I've got the simple application running and I've got an app.js that renders the switch of React Router and then we have two routes and based on the path we either rendering home or about component. These are very simple components with a content inside of it wrapped in a div class page and also the about is exactly the same. Okay, so these are very simple components, just rendering different image, and that will be it for these two components. As I said, the most important part of the code of the switching and animating between the two routes is this switch element. This is a very basic implementation of the React router, and I'm assuming that you already know how it works. We've got a browser router wrapped around the route inside of the React DOM render method. So this is where the React router implementation starts. Then we are rendering the app component and inside of it, as you've seen before, we have the switch. Okay, so hopefully you are familiar with how React router works and now we'll just get to the animations. We will use a React transition group. So if you haven't installed it already, run this npm install React transition group safe. In my code, if I go to VS Code package JSON, I've got it already installed, so make sure you've got this in your project. All the other dependencies are the default dependencies from React Create, Create React App. Okay, so we will be using the example of the transition group. And firstly, we'll need to import it. Okay, so at the top of our file, we need to import CSS transition and transition group. So let's copy this and paste it inside of our app.js. Now we can reuse these two components around our switch. Let's go back to the example of the transition group and we'll scroll down inside of the to-do list. These items are fading out or fading in if we create a new one. So we'll reuse the same concept, but obviously with a different animation and we use it for the React router but the main concept stays the same. We wrapping everything in a transition group that will just render a simple div with the class we can specify. If we don't specify the class name, it will be just an empty div or div without any class on it. And then inside of it, in this example, they rendering loop of items and each item is the CSS transition. Okay, so we want to Firstly, create a CSS transition and wrap our switch around it. So let's copy the CSS transition. For now, we'll just get rid of the key. We'll keep the timeout 300 milliseconds and we'll keep the class names fade the same. And let's don't forget to close it. Now we have the switch wrapped inside of CSS transition and we will need to also wrap it in the transition group. Okay, so let's go back here. Simple transition group, we don't need any class. So let's create transition group. 
and wrap it around the CSS transition. Now let's save the file and have a look at it in a browser. I've got the dev tools open on my right side inside of the console and what we want to look at is all the elements around the switch. So if we search for switch and navigate between the two routes, we'll see that the route is switching. We are showing a different component, but none of the switch transition, CSS transition or transition groups, none of these elements know that that is happening. Okay, so the only place where it's changing is the match location. This one is changing, but we are not passing any of these keys inside of this transition group and the, most importantly, the CSS transition. Okay, so what we want to end up with is when we click, when we are on a home page and we click on about, we want to render two routes at the same time then we will position them absolute so they sit on top of each other and we'll firstly fade out one fade one out and then fade in the new one okay so this is the concept we will need to get some unique key to both switch statements or switch elements and that will be based on the key of the location okay so how can we get the location how can we pass it into the css transition that's what we'll cover next now we can go to VS Code and render empty route. And this route will render all the time because we haven't specified any location, any path. Okay, so route without specifying a path will render all the time. And we want to render this transition group all the time. Okay, so let's move that transition group element inside of empty route. Now when we navigate between the two routes, here is the empty route with no element to render. And if we could see the location key is changing. So this one starts with zero N. And if we go to home page, it changes to eight J five six. So we can pass this key inside of the CSS transition element and that will then render two of them at the same time and then we can do the CSS animation. Back to VS Code and inside of the render of the empty route, we will destructure, we will get just the location and we can use this location and most importantly the location key to create a key on the CSS transition element. Okay, so this will become a location key and now we have a unique identifier for the individual CSS transition groups that should render both transitions or that should render both CSS transition groups when we are switching between the two components. Okay, so let's again go to the switch, select it and navigate between the two routes. And now you see for a millisecond we have two elements, two CSS transition elements, and that's exactly what we wanted. Now it's just a matter of having the right CSS to position them on top of each other and showing and hiding them using animations. Okay, so we have the rendering done. We have two CSS transitions group at a time just for a split of a second. For the time of, of 300 milliseconds, we have two components visible on the page but because our CSS doesn't position them at the moment on top of each other, you will see the flickering and having one at the bottom and one at the top. Okay, so we need to first, firstly fix the CSS to make them sit on top of each other and then play with the CSS timing to make the transition perfect. Let's go back to VS Code and inside of the app CSS, I have already the page styles enabled. So I'm just removing the comments around it and we are positioning absolute the container top 100 to allow the menu to sit on top of it and then left and right zero to make sure it stretches all the way to the edges of the browser. So that is very important that we have the page container position absolute and now they will both sit on top of each other. Okay, so if I 
save it we should not see any scroll bars before we saw the two components underneath each other and there was for a millisecond the, the horizontal scroll bar or the vertical scroll bar and now we should not see any scroll bars when we tweaking or when we going between the two routes now there is no vertical scroll bar but we see a little flicker so the transition is not as smooth as we expected okay so let's debug it let's jump back to VS Code and we will extend the timeout to 30 seconds so 30,000 30, milliseconds and we also disable the fading in fading out okay so this was enabled before I'm disabling it and now we are having the timeout set to 30 seconds that should help us debug what's going on and if I click on the home that's when the transition is happening we'll go to the switch statements and we have two of them both of them inside of the related CSS transition but both of them are showing me the home component okay so we have two components of the same route but all we want to do is when we animating out we only want to see the home component in one of the switches and the other one should not render the home component okay so that is the problem that our switch doesn't know what the location is that will be a quick fix if we set the location on the switch to location now we will only render the component at the right time okay so no more doubling up just passing the location to the switch element will only render the route inside of it at the right time okay so if I save it and view it in a browser we should not see any flickering we should not see any doubling up and we should see the two routes on top of each other one is rendering the home component that we want to fade out and one is rendering the about component that will about to fade in okay so this was the last bit of debugging we had to do and now we can fix and finalize the CSS animation all we have to do in the CSS or in the code we'll go back to 300 milliseconds for the timeout and we will bring back the CSS for the animation itself we will be fading it in 300 milliseconds and if I refresh the page we should see the animations nicely happening without any flickering one element is fading out and one is fading in now let's talk a little bit about the classes themselves and for that to make it easier I'll just inc increase the size again of the timeout to three seconds in the CSS as well we bump it up by one zero which will extend the number of seconds the transition is happening and then if I go just to the elements view and click on about you'll see that there are two elements with the extra classes so I will pause it here and we can talk more about how the classes are structured if you've never worked with CSS transition groups now let's break down the classes that are applied to these elements when the animation when the transition is happening the first class fade exit is applied to the element that is transitioning away and that has opacity 1 and the fade exit active class has the opacity set to 0 and also has the transition okay so combination of these two classes removes the element from the view and then at the same time this fade enter active or fade enter class make sure that the element that is coming into a view has opacity set to zero and it's waiting 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 and then the animation to fade it in kicks in through this fade enter active class okay that has a opacity set to one and has the transition on it okay so combination of these classes is what's happening in our example and if you are not familiar how these classes work this is coming from the angular ng animate library and react and the react transition group is using the same concept and here are the classes inside of the style sheet you see the fade exit fade exit active 
we will remove the zeros so we'll go back to 300 milliseconds and the last thing we'll do we'll fix up the timing so 300 milliseconds plus 150 delay means 450 milliseconds we have to set the duration for the animation to be nice and smooth from start to finish and from both of these elements to be visible on the page for the duration so let's go back to the code change the duration to 450 now when we save the both files and go back to the browser we should see the animation nicely working transitioning away and transitioning in okay the transitioning out is intentionally taking less time than the transitioning in but you can play with it set up your own timing now that you understand the classes and let's quickly recap what we've done we wrap the switch statement inside of the CSS transition element and transition group and then we've used the empty route to pass the location and set the key on the CSS transition to the location dot key that will generate two CSS transition elements on the page when we are transitioning between the two routes and we're using the fade class to make the transition happening using CSS and we also at the end had to pass in the location to the switch to make sure we only rendering the route inside of that switch that is that should be showing for that location okay so hope this all makes sense i know it was full on but i wanted to cover it in depth step by step so hopefully you found it useful and that's it all for today hope you've enjoyed this react tutorial let me know in the comments have you ever tried to animate between two routes and how did you go about it and don't forget to hit the like subscribe to the channel for more videos like this until next time happy coding bye